Now, I want to emphasize balance. I want to emphasize that I, that I think there's room in our mental economy for all, all sides of the equation, but what we're going to be talking about today more is the unconscious, because I think that this, that the, the ways of thinking engendered by the un unconscious um, have become somewhat lost by our culture. Um, cool. Let me crack into it. So imagination is the star in man. This is a quote from from an alchemist called Roland the Younger, and and this is probably the central theme, the central idea of the day. Um, because why a star? Why a star? Well, we're all literally made of star dust, which is something to just think of sometimes. Um, and it's the imagination is the star in man. The sun also is a star. So the illuminating factor, the life giver, the, the, the thing that feeds the generations, the generations of vegetables, animals, humans, life has been fed by our local star, the sun, and of course the moon reflects the star's light. So thinking in this stellar way is quite an interesting thing. And then we are our literal components of our, I don't know the science, the hydrogen and the carbon and that uh, was born in, in the nebula of stars. Um, and so, star to me is an image of illumination, right? And so, imagination. Ima imagination, that has its roots in, in the Latin, I think it is, imago. And imago means image. So, so the image-making function is the, is the illuminator, is the thing that brings consciousness in humans, in, um, in individuals. Aims of the day. Authenticity. John Frusciante from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, authenticity. So, so there's a tradition in philosophy called existentialism, and this is the father of existentialism, Soren Kierkegaard, and it. What Kierkegaard puts his finger on very well, I think, is the struggle in life to, to find the truth that is yours, to find yourself, to find your purpose, to find your way, and to not um, lose yourself, I suppose, in the collective, in the collective, in the roles that you play at work, with family, with different people, the, the masks you wear in the theatre and the drama of life. You animate these different personas, as Jung would call them, but then who are you? Do, like, the authenticity is emphasising who are you in essence? Who, what is your truth? And so I love this from Kierkegaard. What I really need is to get clear about what I am to do, not what I must know, except insofar as knowledge must precede every act. What matters is to find my purpose, to see what it really is that God wills that I shall do. The crucial thing is to find a truth that is truth for me. And so Kierkegaard was famously said that subjectivity is truth. And so um, this is the existentialist perspective. This is the essence of authenticity, that subjectivity is truth. Now, everything I've just said about science, objectivity, the rational paradigms that, that um, saturate our culture, the objective lens is a different lens from what is my truth, and this is Kierkegaard's brilliant insight, is that, uh, let me, I brought some Kierkegaard with me, let me see if I can, can get this, get this across. Um, so he says, I, I accept an imperative of knowledge and that through it men may be influenced, but then, 
that knowledge must come alive in me. Um, and this is what I now recognize as the most important of all. This is what my soul thirsts for as the African deserts thirst for water. This is what is lacking. This was what I needed to lead a completely human life, and not merely one of knowledge, so that I could base the development of my thought not on, yes, not on something called objective, something that in any case is not my own, but upon something that is bound up with the deepest roots of my existence, through which I am, so to speak, grafted into the divine. So, authenticity, big theme of today. Who are you? What's your purpose? What's your truth? What is the essence of your soul? And what do you yearn for? Um, yeah, and that, that question can, can become obscured by objectivity and objective paradigms, although they're incredibly important. A second key aim for today, I would say, would be, would be harmony. And so now, we're, 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 here's, here's a, a Buddhist monk, um, at harmony with the water, at harmony with nature, in harmony with nature. And so now, I think, beyond just, you know, what is my truth, what, do, what, do, what is the purpose, what is my calling, it's also about bringing being into alignment. And so now, we're, we're taking a lens that is beyond a story about who you are, and where you're going, and that whole narrative of you know, your, your purpose in life, which is important, as I just emphasized. But now we're thinking more globally. We're actually thinking now more in terms of being itself. What is the right way to be? This is why music, this is why mathematics, this is why nature can all instruct us in many different ways as to the nature of how being should be, how form should be put together, how things should go, how things should flow. And um, a sense for harmony um, is really important. And I, I emphasize harmony also because we're going to be talking a fair amount about opposites today. So I've already mentioned the sun and the moon, consciousness and the unconscious, light and dark. And so if we're talking about harmony, I think we're talking about finding the balance between these, finding the optimal relationship between these. And out of that relationship emerges a third plane of awareness, a third state. Um, and so that's why harmony is going to be one of our aims, bringing everything together in a way whereby our soul sings. He who lives in harmony with himself lives in harmony with the whole universe. Marcus Aurelius. Wholeness would be, the, be our third aim, and this is related to harmony, it's related to authenticity, and this really was Jung's primary aim, it was wholeness. It wasn't to be good, it wasn't to be bad, it wasn't to choose an opposite over the other, it was to be whole, it was to be, well that's the best word, whole, and, and whole really is the root of the word health. To be healthy is to be whole, wholesome foods, you know. And so, and so Jung used the image of the mandala, I think this is one he drew, um, as an image of wholeness. And so we see the mandala come up in, in, in many, many different traditions, religious traditions, um, and it's, it's considered a sacred symbol. And um, I think it's, it's the circle is complete, the circle has no breaks in it, the circle moves unto infinity, um, and it, the circle geometrically balances opposites, as is happening here, so we've got Sol and Luna and these different dimensions here, so wholeness. And the, thing else, the other thing I would say about wholeness is, I see life as 
a journey towards wholeness, and this was Jung's central thought. And the idea is that we are localized in space and time as we are right now. Um, specific dates, specific spaces, right here. And then we move through those spaces. And we even move through those spaces aimlessly, without direction, without an inner sense of harmony and alignment with our authentic being. Or we move slowly, slowly, closer and closer to the center of our being, to the root of our being, to our soul, to our self. Um, and we integrate different experiences through life. We are informed by different experiences. We feed on information, and that information brings formation to our character, to our personality, to our, to our being across time. And so a big principle in, in Jung is, is the notion of the shadow, and the shadow is that which is dark within the psyche, which is unconscious. And so it's, it's, an instructive, it's an instructive piece of knowledge to know that to look where you don't want to look is often the way to wholeness. It's often the way to bring on board those latent aspects of your personality that maybe um, have not been fully developed.